What's going on guys, Billy here, and today I wanted to follow up on my previous video where we covered the brand new firmware update for the DJI Mavic Mini and everything that came with it. Now without a doubt, the biggest change, or I guess the biggest feature that we got with that update is the ability to now unlock geo zones, or more specifically, unlock authorization zones within the DJI Fly application. So as long as we have the proper authorization to fly in these zones, then we can unlock it within the Fly application and we can fly our Mavic Mini. Now, now, I understand a lot of people that are picking up this drone are probably buying it as their first drone and they have no idea what a geo zone is. They have no idea what an authorization zone is. So what I want to do today is go over exactly how to obtain authorization and properly unlock geo zones with the DJI Mavic Mini. So a great place to start here would be to cover exactly what a geo zone is. Now, what I want to do in this video is kind of go through a quick crash course of exactly what these geo zones do, what they mean and what they signify. But I do just want to let you guys know that I created a full in-depth guide to learning what these geo zones mean, what you need to do to fly in certain geo zones, and also what you need to look out for. So if you want to check that video out, I'll leave a link down in the description or I'll put one up in the top right corner. Okay, so anyway, moving on here, what exactly is a geo zone? It is an area that DJI has marked off in their FlySafe map database for one reason or another. This means that there isn't one type of geo zone, there's multiple that you need to familiarize yourself with that are marked by different colors. This map that you have been looking at here on the screen can be found on DJI's website. I'll leave a link in the description so you can go ahead and check it out if you guys want to. Now this all might look like a mess to you right now, but to help make sense of it, let me show you this key that I made to understand what flight restrictions, if any, come with the different colors and zones marked on this map. First, we have restricted zones marked by red where flight is totally prohibited. Your drone will not take off inside of an area marked as restricted and it will not fly into it. It's almost like hitting an invisible brick wall. Next is altitude zones marked by gray, which you usually see coming off of airports that cover the approach and takeoff patterns of manned air traffic. Your maximum height can sometimes be limited depending on where you are within these zones. Next is authorization zones marked by blue, which require LANC approval. This is what we are going to be getting into here in just a second, a little bit more in depth. The final two that are really important are warning zones marked by yellow and enhanced warning zones marked by orange. Both of these do not require any sort of authorization. They don't come with any sort of flight restriction, but instead it's put into place just to let the operator of the drone know that he or she must exercise caution when flying in these areas. The final three zones marked on this key are often not displayed and aren't going to be covered for the sake of time and the sake of the topic of this video, but it's good to be familiar with them if you guys are brand new to flying drones. So if we jump back to this map that I showed you, you'll begin to get a better understanding of what everything means. Right now, I'm showing you the Philadelphia area, which is where I spend most of my time flying for fun and for work. Now, when I look at this GeoZone map database on my computer, I'm typically only worried about seeing authorization zones and keep an eye out for warning and enhanced warning zones when I'm at the location that I've chosen to fly at. So for now, I'll turn those off. Now, luckily for me and anyone who lives in Philly, the authorization zone surrounding the Philadelphia Philadelphia International Airport really doesn't cover up much of the city. With that said, I can successfully fly my Mavic Mini over the Delaware River, which sits to the east of the city, or up here where the art museum sits just off of the Schuylkill River without having to apply for a LANC. Where I would have to apply for authorization, though, is within that blue authorization zone down near PHL. I should also mention that despite me showing the GeoZone database from DJI's website, you can also access this same exact map from your DJI Fly application application by tapping on the current location in the top left corner of the home screen of the application. This gives you the ability to see all of the geo zones in your area and potential authorization zones that need unlocking. So I know that I just threw a ton of information at you guys, probably more than I should have for what the topic of this video is, but understanding DJI's geo zone system as well as their fly safe database is something I consider to be very important. So if you want to learn more, be sure to check out the link to my tutorial down in the description. Okay, so now now let's get into the main topic of this video, the main focus, and that is the blue authorization zones. And we want to learn how to gain approval and how to unlock our Mavic Mini. It is a two-step process. The first step is gaining approval from the FAA. Now, we do this through a third-party application. We don't have to use the DJI Fly application. We don't have to be connected or we don't have to boot up our Mavic Mini whatsoever. Instead, we download an app like
like Kitty Hawk or Air Map. Those are my two go-to apps. For the sake of this video, just for demonstration purposes, I'll be using Kitty Hawk here. I use this a lot just to kind of get an understanding of what the airspace looks like around me, where I'm flying at, and also to get an understanding of what the flight conditions look like for the current time. So now what I want to do is gain authorization, gain approval to fly within Philadelphia International Airport, right? So the first thing we do is tap on add, then we tap on request LANC authorization. Now let's say we want to fly, I guess, say down in Roosevelt Park, right? We'll tap here, we'll swipe up, and then we'll tap on get authorization. Now the process for gaining authorization is the same for part 107 pilots and for recreational pilots. It used to be different. It used to be a very painful process. If you're recreational, all you had to do was call up the air traffic control tower. But now that we have a link, it just seems backward. We can get instant approval through our phone. No need to call anybody. It is so much easier. But again, the process for part 107 and for recreational is basically the same through Kitty Hawk. So let's do recreational because I think a lot of people will be flying the Mavic Mini for recreational purposes. And I do just want to mention that you want to be familiar with what these different boxes indicate and what the colors mean, because in certain areas, you can only gain authorization up to a certain altitude limit. So right now within this box, because I'm surrounded by red and orange around the box, I can only gain authorization up to 100 feet. And this is displayed at the graphic at the bottom. So right now I can only slide up to 100 feet for instant approval. And if I go anything over 100 feet to gain approval for that, it's not going to be instant. So let's say, for example, we exit out of this and we choose an area up here around the Schuylkill River. Now we're in an area that's boxed off by um, orange and yellow lines. We'll swipe up. We'll tap on get authorization, recreational, and now we can get up to 200 feet of clearance. So it depends on where you want to gain approval as to how high you can fly and how high you can gain approval for. Now also you can alter, I guess, the confines of your flight area by dragging and clicking around on the corners of the box. So let's say we want to fly around this area. Boom, we wanna fly up to 200 feet. Good, now we'll tap on next. Now we enter the date and time as well as the duration of our flight. So the date and time, it's a little bit later when I'm filming this. So let's do Monday, January 6th. Let's say we wanna fly at about 10, 15 a.m. We'll tap on okay. We'll say that the duration is for about an hour and 45 minutes. That's how long we wanna fly for. We'll tap on okay. And then we'll tap on next. Now it gives us all the information we need to know about this airspace we're gaining approval for. So it says we're eligible for auto approval. You can read some more information about what LANC is and as well as the date and time, the, um, the duration, as well as again, the, uh, the area that we're going to be flying in. Then we'll tap on next. And it brings us to the information that will be submitted to the FAA. So it gives us our name and our phone number at the top, both of which I've blocked out just for security reasons here in my video. It gives us some information about LANC, and then we can slide down and agree to all the different terms of operation. If you guys want to, you can go ahead and check out all of these a little bit more in depth. But for me, I'll be clicking on all of them, agreeing to all of them. We'll tap on agree and submit and Boom, there we are. We now have authorization to fly here during the duration up to 200 feet for this specific flight and also on the time that I selected. And after this, Kitty Hawk does follow up with a text message sent to your device. So it gives you a little bit more information about your flight. So now that we've completed the first step of this process, which is gaining approval, now we have to actually unlock the Mavic Mini. So in order to do this, we'll boot the drone up, we'll pull up the DJI Fly application, and once we go to take off in an authorization zone, a prompt will appear in the center of the screen that shows us the name of this authorization zone and gives us the option to unlock there at the bottom of the screen. This then brings us to a screen which asks for a phone number and asks us to agree to DJI's GeoZone terms and conditions. For the sake of privacy, again, I blocked off my screen here, but upon inputting your phone number, you will then have to enter the verification code that was sent via text message, which brings us to the final screen. This asks us to check off a few boxes stating that we are qualified to fly in the area. We assume full liability and that we agree to upload our device information to DJI. After this, we are free to take off and begin flying as usual, as long as it is in line with what we were approved for to fly in that specific area. So guys, those are the two 
two steps we need to go through in order to unlock the blue authorization zones with the Mavic Mini. I know that watching this video back, it might seem like it's a very tedious process, but after you just get the hang of it, you can pretty much bang out the approval process and then the unlock process, and I would say under three minutes. So don't worry, it's really not all that confusing once you get the hang of it. And also, I do just want to mention that you can unlock those red zones. You do have to jump through a couple of hoops. You've got to go onto DJI site. You've got to fill out a form. You've got to get consent from the person who has jurisdiction over that controlled and restricted airspace. That's something for another video because all we want to do is talk about authorization zones in this video. But just know that even though there's an area that is marked off in red, if you get the proper approval and if you go through the proper steps, you can unlock those zones too. Let me know if you guys want to see that in a future video. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.